This is the word of God. Since you have heard about Jesus and learned that the truth comes from him, throw off all your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of one body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way that you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgive one another, just as Christ has forgiven you. That's Ephesians 4:21. Uh, last week, we talked about the fact that Jesus uh, gave us a model by which uh, ministry should be done. And that model, that model was invitation and challenge. Uh, and our values as a church need to reflect what Jesus came to do. Opinions, uh, the latest you know, marketing strategies or programs that churches do or whatever it might be, to me has no implication on what we've been sent here to do. We have an instruction manual and we're gonna follow that instruction manual. Jesus gave us a perfect model of those two things, invitation and challenge. And so two of our eight values that we've been talking about that drive us as a church are acceptance, which we talked about last week, and accountability, which I wanna hit on this week. Anybody who knows Forward Church or knows any of us individually uh, knows that we have opened our arms wide to invite every single man, woman, and child in this community forward, uh, no matter where they're at in life. And not to judge them, but to help them, to ch challenge them at some point to move forward in a godly direction. But in order for this thing to be fruitful, in order for us to truly live up to our name as forward, there must come a point in our relationship with each individual in which we challenge them to make that move, to step outside of our comfort zone and take responsibility for the things in our heart and in our lives that are holding us back from being all that God has made us to be and to seeing that abundant life that he meant for us to live. Sin, and that which stands against that instruction manual that we talked about, is single-handedly the thing that is bringing pain and heartache into our lives. And so, if I truly love you, how can I not address those things? and help each and every person move past that into a new life in Christ. I can't day after day watch someone, uh, their life be ripped apart by, let's say, alcoholism without at some point, once I've earned a right to speak into their life, address that thing that is stealing their joy, killing their spirit, and destroying their relationship with God. But I think that the problem with, that the church as a whole uh, that we fall into is that we, we, we run into this, uh, we've tried to address people's sin without first building a relationship with them and loving them right where they're at. Um, and so we preach the gospel with, with bullhorns uh, and tell everybody that they're going to hell. Or we just randomly meet people and tell them how they should live their lives without first loving them right where they're at, wherever that may be, and earning the right and the invitation by them to speak into their life and bring to light some of the things that the enemy has been hiding from them because they just don't see how it's jacking them up. And the reason is that it's easier for us to just come up here once a week, try to give an inspiring message, and then go back and hide in some office for six days until the next time I got a word for people. We've cowered away from the hard work of being the church in favor of doing the easy work of just doing church. Forward Church is a place where we will challenge and stir the water in each and every life in this room to bring about change and keep things moving forward in a godly direction. And so messages like this one become necessary to challenge our family to be all that they can be in Christ. Uh, not in our own strength, but through His. Because trust and believe, we can't do anything on our own. Before I met Christ, Christ is the only thing in my life that makes anything good, period. 
three days out of my word and I'm jacked up and messed up and right back to that, you know, moving towards that old man <laughs> because he's the only positive thing, the only active ingredient that changes hearts. And that, so that accountability includes everybody up here also, each and every one of us. Like I always say, we're all on, on even ground. There's no need to call me pastor. <laughs> There's not, none of that. At the foot of the cross, the ground is even, and I need to be held accountable because sometimes I can't see what somebody else might see. If there's a problem with something that we're doing or that we've done, you can address it directly uh, here because we're not perfect by any means. And I need to hear genuine emotion regarding the way that you feel about the way things are going or things that we're doing. Nobody is above reproach, period. <clears throat> We're all on even ground. We will not be a church where people feel like they have to go home and gossip about something they don't agree with or the ways in which they've been slighted by a certain church. Uh, don't let the position fool you. I'm not soft by any means. You can very easily come and speak whatever it is on your heart uh, to me and to any of our leadership any concerns or questions, gossiping about this text that struck me the wrong way or the way we handle the particular situation will only bring division to this family. And we will not slip into church as usual, smiling at each other during the service, only to go home, get in our cars and be like, oh, did you see what she was wearing? Or did you hear what he said? You can't, we will not be that. We will never be that. Uh, we will not slip into that. But when you get a lot of people together uh, and as a family, you know from just your personal families, there's squabbles, there's pettiness, and really what it all comes from is pride. Oh, he's not going to talk to me like that because I'm this person. <laughs> you know? uh, let us all just love each other enough to earn the right to speak fruitfully into the lives of each other without feeling like we have to be fake about things. There is a place that, that can come in any relationship where the guard can be let down, a place of vulnerability, where we can begin to let others in and help us with the things that we struggle with as an individual. And very simply, that's what I feel like our calling is, to love people so much with no agenda. When we hand out chicken bags on the street, it's not with a business card. Agendaless love, just like Jesus came and showed us how to live. But at some point, there will come a place of vulnerability because we all have things in our life where it's like, man, I know I put up a good guard, but I'm, it's jacked up. I wish I could stop doing this. I wish I could stop doing that. Uh, and we all want that, but there needs to come a place of vulnerability. What we've come here to do is to earn the right to that you feel comfortable enough and come to that place of vulnerability that we can speak into your life because I just happen to have the cure for everything that ails humanity in my pocket in Jesus Christ, flat out. And I, and I don't say that as a faith statement. I say it because I was a hopeless, heartless, lustful, angry, violent drug dealer What's up, Linda? I want to know, can I quit puffing cigarettes if Cigar I really want to? Absolutely, no doubt. As a matter of fact, I got, my testimony is partly that, that, you know what I'm saying? I could not do it on my own power. Yeah. Gave it to Christ, and he did it for me. Yeah. And I'll talk to you about that right after okay. the service. We'll hit it. Right. Um, but we need to come to that place of vulnerability, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and earn the right to get to that point because I have the cure for everything. Uh, you know, messed up childhood, got the cure for it. Anger, got the cure for it. Cigarettes, addictions that we can't break, I got the cure for it. Right in my pocket, will you allow me to give it? And when we're challenged in our walk, let's let go of the pride that keeps us from accepting criticism with a humble heart and perhaps making that change if valid. The reason why we have no vision of growing, like the, the, the big idea of church is like, let's just you know, get as big as possible, it's because we're going to challenge directly. And there's many people who will look that challenge in the face and say, you know what, uh, I didn't actually want to change my life. I just wanted to do church and not be back and not come back because we will not uh, just be an invitation, invitation, but no challenge. We want people to grow in their, in their relationship with Christ, period. And so we want to multiply as churches and plant them all over this community, but growth is not our target. If I had something in my teeth, I cannot get it out unless somebody else comes and tells me about it, right? Uh, in the same way, many people, uh, many times we cannot see some of the things in our lives that are holding us back. And we need our brothers and sisters who we know love us and are not judging us to just be honest and genuine and helping us to make that change in our life. Until we pers become personally accountable for the sin in our lives, we cannot move forward, period. 
I cannot continue to make excuses for the sin in my life and expect things to change because I'll always have an excuse. I can come up with one for anything. Uh, and I think many times as Christians, we experience remorse over our sins, but not repentance. We feel bad about the things that we need to change, but we don't do anything about it. We talk about it or, or, or wish we could change or pray out of remorse like, man, I got to stop doing that, God. I know I made a mistake. And because we feel bad about it, again, it just points at us. We don't want to feel bad about it, but we don't repent. Remorse is like if I'm going the wrong way on the freeway and I realize it, but I just keep going the wrong way time after time after time, exit after exit after exit, just hoping that at some point I'll find a detour that'll lead me back to the right track. Repentance is me getting off of the exit and going back the way that I know I need to be going. The Bible says that if anything causes us to sin, completely cut it off. It says that if my hand causes me to sin, chop it off and keep it moving, because it's better to go to heaven with one hand than to burn in hell with two. <laughs> there was a point in my life where I had to radically amputate the DVD drive of my computer, because it was tempting me to watch things that I knew were wrong and that were sucking the life out of my relationship with Christ. And so rather than just sin against God time after time after time and feel bad about it and pray and remorse and all that stuff, I needed to repent by literally ripping this DVD drive out of my computer to where there's, there was no longer a DVD drive in there, which sucked <laughs> because I couldn't use it for anything then. But sometimes repentance is hard and it takes inconvenience and hardship for us to cut that out of our life. The verse that saved me, as a matter of fact, uh, about the branches. Uh, Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can't do anything, but you plug into me and I'll show you what life's all about. It says that when you are fruitful, I will prune you to make you more fruitful. And if you think about pruning from the, from the aspect of the branch, that wouldn't be a fun process. You know what I'm saying? Like pruning is like slicing away at the parts of the branch so that it can then be more fruitful. Uh, there are certain things in our life that each of us will have to slice out of our lives and prune in order to really move forward and not just talk about it. Many times we want to be saved from the consequences of sin, but don't actually want to stop that sin itself. The consequences that cause us to feel remorse, uh, when if only we would repent, we can be free from the consequences forever. If we could just repent, get off the exit, and go the opposite way. When we do the hard things, let go of our past, and move forward past them, we will begin to see more and more and more of the blessings that our awesome God has for us in our life. And again, I say that not as a faith statement, but because I've seen it. You know, there were so many things in my life that were holding me, jacking me up, and it was hard to slice and prune at that, but God's, God's done incredible. I couldn't even have imagined six years ago on a prison bunk when I said, God, if you exist, prove it. Six years ago, six years later, I'm the pastor of a church in the community where I spent my whole life dealing drugs. I mean, that's, it's amazing. When we will prune out of our life the things that God does not want in our life, he'll do things that I couldn't have written a story better than. Amazing, because he's an amazing God. Uh, it's just that many times we want to see the blessing before we're willing to make that sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? It's just natural, like show me the car and then I'll make the payment. You know? But it doesn't work that way with God. With him, we need to sign the back of the check and whatever he chooses to fill on the front of that check is up to him. You want that great relationship? Just sign the back of the check and live purely pursuing God. And he might just fill out the front of that check with that spouse of your dreams. We want that great job or whatever. Just sign the back of the check uh, with treasuring what he's already given you and doing uh, good things with the money you do have. And he might just fill out the back of that check with the job of your dreams. But we need to sign the back of the check first and trust him, and then the blessing comes. Once we're willing to sign the back of that check over to him, he has blessings for us that we can never imagine. I could never have imagined what God was going to do in my life and my heart until I died one day and signed the back of that check, finally. And it's not always instant. Sometimes he'll fill in that check with a great spouse that's going to come two years from now. Am I still willing to sign the back of the check and trust him? Or do I want it right now and I'll do it my way? <clears throat> or a great job that'll come on the back end of a year of hardship and struggle. But we will never know what he has for us unless we just sign the back of that check and start living our lives accountable to his standard of living and his call for our lives. I can't say I'm trusting God for a great job, so I'm going to just hustle in the meantime until that job comes. 
For the most part, all of us here have seen at least a glimpse of the blessings that he has for us. He's given us a taste of what life can be like in him. But we may have one foot in and one foot out of this thing, and so we don't get to see that full blessing that comes with living a life that is fully accountable in every area of it to him and his standard. There are only two ways to walk through this life, period. We can walk in the flesh and spend our days gratifying every little immediate thought that comes into my mind, uh, or we can walk by the Spirit and fight against the sinful flesh that all of us have. So I don't need to detail like individual sins that you know, we need to hold ourselves accountable for and move past, because it really comes down to that simple choice. Well, I choose to walk by the flesh every day and just immediately gratify whatever it is that comes to heart and just be a slave to the things of this world. Or will I walk by the Spirit and reap the fruits of what comes with that? And you've seen all that. You've seen at least a glimpse of it. It's why we're here. That decides where your heart is, in Christ or in this jacked up world. And I don't want to look at your history. I want to look at your heart. We are the, who, are, who are the people who will rise up and live a life that is accountable fully to God in every area of it. When the community watches on and sees a family of people taking responsibility for their failures and actually growing in their relationship with God, not just getting together once a week to sing some great songs and then act like we have it all together, but to really grow, literally, that's when it will become like a sweet fragrance spreading throughout these streets where more and more and more people want to come to get down with a forward lifestyle. I grew up in a neighborhood that was, it's filled with churches, right? But what was the attraction? I didn't see any people transform. It wasn't really helping anybody. They're still living how they want to live at home, but every Sunday we dressed up and we... <laughs> so for me growing up, it wasn't like, man, that's where the power is. I want to know that Christ guy. I didn't see dad changing. I didn't see mom becoming kinder. <laughs> There was no power. And if people don't see the power of life transformation, what's the draw? We will never judge ourselves based on how many people we can get to come through that door. We will judge ourselves based on the type of people we send back out that door. And the world will see life transformation is not only possible, but it has arrived in Cleveland, Ohio. Because we all want to get better at doing this life thing, all of us, in here and out there. But until now, we just haven't known the way. Jesus Christ, the example he set and the Holy Spirit he plants within us when we put our faith in him, is the way that we can actually do it, change our hearts. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father unless through me. So let's live a life that's through him, the way he said to live, the rhythm he set to find happiness in this world and stop existing so we can start living a real life in him. If you're not involved in a flag, and flags basically is a forward life advancement group uh, where me and you, or you and another uh, friend in Christ, you come together once a week to just live this thing out together. We all have faults, and we all have things in our life that we need to weed out in order to really experience Jesus in, in the pure. If you're not involved in a flag, I encourage you to get involved. It's probably the hardest thing that we do here to get involved in because, man, when me and, uh, me and my friend over here started doing a flag, it's like, okay, I got to sit down with another man and lay it all on the table. Like, this is, you know, this is what I struggle with. This is what, and then when I fail at it, come back the next week to say, hey, man, this is, you know, and be honest and accountable to that person. That's a hard thing to do. When we do that, the Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man builds on another. And honestly, the, all of life changes. When we're accountable to another person uh, who's here, it helps us to be accountable to God who we don't tangibly see and feel every day. And so everybody here, I encourage to get in those flags, get involved in the real life of following Christ and not just church. Uh, and we'll see the forward movement of an entire family of people here move into the entire forward movement of this community. We're not here to play church by any means. We're here to radically impact every single part of life in this community and revolutionize the way that people see God. Because I've met him personally. It isn't a faith thing, I've met him personally. And so I want this whole world to know that we have the cure for everything that's jacking up everything in our neighborhood. Father, I just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. 
uh, in each of our individual lives in this church, Lord, in this community, all the lives that have come to Christ since we came here, Lord, since you've cast a vision of loving people right where they're at and just loving them to such a degree where it compels them to want to move forward in their life. Father, I pray that we would forever remain humble in this calling, Lord, that we would keep the ground even, that we are just brothers and sisters trying to figure this thing out and knowing that you're the answer to figuring it out. So, Father, we give you glory for everything that you're doing apart from us, Lord, apart from any little effort that we can put in. You're doing incredible things. Almost a hundred people you've drawn to yourself, Lord. And I give you thanks for that, Lord, that I could even be in the stands and watch that happen, to watch that baptism happen yesterday, Lord, to watch people moving forward in their relationship with you, Lord. I give you thanks and praise for all you are and all you're doing here and around the world. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat>